On that day, humanity received a grim reminder. We lived in fear of the Weiss. Yup, that's Ruby. I bet you're wondering how it got here. Well, to explain that, we're going to have to go back to the start. Let's take a look at how the new Ruby Ice Queendom anime compares to the original Rooster Teeth show. Ruby is a show that I have an incredible amount of nostalgia for. I remember watching it on YouTube when it first came out in 2013 and having my mind absolutely blown by it. Never before had I seen something of this quality produced by independent creators, and the crazy fight choreography, upbeat music, engaging world, and four female protagonists had me hooked instantly. There was even a time in my life when Ruby became one of my favorite shows, and I had the opportunity to meet a bunch of the cast and crew and help interview them years before I ever had a channel. But my interest in the show grew dimmer over time, due to each new season adding way too many characters and too many lore elements without developing them adequately. This is all to say that when I heard Ruby was going to be made into an actual anime, and that it would be taking a different narrative path from the original show, I was initially excited. Ruby Ice Queendom is a canon-adjacent retelling of Ruby by Studio Shaft, known for shows like Madoka Magica, the Monogatari series, and March Comes In Like a Lion. And since Madoka is one of my all-time favorite shows, I figured the series was in good hands. But I was wrong. I was so wrong. This is about how I imagine things went down. Alright guys, we've secured the rights to make a new anime based on Ruby, the extremely beloved American internet animation and we're allowed to make changes to the plot. Alright, here's what I'm thinking. We keep the general structure and main series of events at the start, and make sure to focus more on character development, cut down the bloated cast, and keep the lore to its very core elements. Or, hear me out, what if we condensed all of Ruby Volume 1 into three episodes, then made the entire rest of the season into a therapy session for Weiss in the form of a dream sequence? Yeah. That's actually what they did. They condensed two hours of runtime from the original series into three episodes. Then they dedicated the rest of the season to Team Ruby and friends doing an Inception-esque dive into Weiss's dreams to free her from the clutches of a grim that causes potentially fatal nightmares. Honestly, it feels like something straight off of fanfiction.net. But before I get too much into the negatives, I want to explain how this series comes to diverge from the original Ruby. It actually seemed like things would be great after the first two episodes. They are essentially a shot-for-shot -shot remake of most of the important scenes of Ruby Volume 1, but they also seamlessly integrate points from the original character trailers into the beginning. I was quite impressed by the level of respect Shaft seemed to have for the source material, and their 2D animation was still able to capture Rooster Teeth's visual style well. It was also just great to see classic scenes with a lot more detail to the background, as Ruby Volume 1 is amazing, but clearly had a shoestring budget. And most importantly, Shaft kept the majority of the elements of Monty Ohm's incredible fight choreography. But everything starts to unravel from Episode 3 onward. The show is still retelling events from the original, but picks up the pace more and more, skipping tons of scenes or compressing them. Considering Ruby Volume 1 already has very short episodes to begin with, things in Ice Queendom begin to move so quickly that you'll probably find yourself wondering multiple times if you accidentally skipped ahead. The most insulting example of this is at the end of Episode 3, where the show begins the fight at the docks but immediately skips to the end with Penny walking away from the flames with no explanation. Yes, that's right, they cut out the best fight scene in Ruby Volume 1. And that's the last point of contact with the original plot, too. The rest of the season, as I mentioned before, is Weiss's dream sequence. Her friends try to save her from the Grimm that's threatening her life while she fights them off because she doesn't seem to really realize she's in a dream, and manifestations of her oppressive family and emotional issues are portraying her friends as enemies. As a one or two episode concept, this idea actually wouldn't be terrible. I could see it being a good way for Weiss to work through the initial feelings of animosity she has for the other members of Team Ruby, especially Blake. I thought Weiss and Blake's conflict was actually smoothed over too quickly in the original Volume 1, so this would be a good way to explore that further. But it absolutely does not work as an entire season arc. In fact, I'm not even really sure who this show is for. 
If someone never watched the original Ruby, I imagine they would be absolutely baffled by the fact that the first few episodes contain a lot of world building, including Volume 1's main plot of Dust Heists, only to have none of that information be relevant for the rest of the season because it takes place in a dream world that's completely bizarre and different from reality. The first three episodes serve no purpose other than getting all the characters in the same location. And to top it off, the dream sequences contain a lot of references that would only make sense to people who have already seen Ruby. But at the same time, hardcore Ruby fans won't be satisfied either. Sure, I can follow what's going on even with all the scenes that were cut, but it's agonizing to spend an entire season on something that will, at most, strengthen the girl's friendship a little. And another thing Ruby fans will notice is that Ice Queendom basically scrubs out all of the humor of the original. It's kind of funny that some of the touches about the original that were the most anime get removed when the show is actually made into an anime. Overall, it feels like the writers of Ice Queendom just wanted to do an anime about diving into dreams and simply decided to capitalize off of an already popular franchise rather than creating their own characters. I will say that the visuals in the dream sequences are pretty cool for the most part. Shaft is a skilled animation studio and I really don't have any complaints when it comes to quality. The Team Ruby outfits in this show are also top notch. And there are even a few elements of the writing that I like, such as the fact that characters entering into Weiss's dreams take on the appearance of how she sees them mentally. For example, Yang is even stronger than usual, while John's sword is too heavy for him to handle. But the rest of the writing within the dreams is sadly not good. To start, there's an original character, Xion Zaiden, who can send the girls into the dreams and gives them coins they can use within them. The coins can be used to do several things in the dream, like creating doors between points, getting a map, calling Xion, or exiting the dream. This leads to a lot of plot convenience where the girls just repeatedly escape situations with the same methods instead of doing anything creative. In addition, the images within the dream, while visually striking, are full of really heavy-handed metaphors. There's only so many times they can beat you over the head with the fact that Weiss's father is an evil businessman before you get tired of it. And I did indeed get bored of the dream concept after probably about three episodes. The show seems like it has the ambition to do a concept like Sunny Boy without the sophistication in storytelling. There are some cool fights in Weiss's dreams, but they're so brief and the scenes between them are such a slog to get through that it doesn't feel worth it at all. Despite its much less detailed visuals and short episode runtimes, Ruby Volume 1 is a much better show. The season has a clear arc that involves all of the characters, where the events at the beginning are consequential to the end. Ice Queendom sidelines everybody except Team Ruby and John, and the main arc of the series has nothing to do with what the first two and a half episodes introduce. I also just feel so much more heart and passion while watching the original Ruby than I do while watching Ice Queendom. Monty Ohm's fight concepts were so breathtaking that even Rooster Teeth couldn't fully replicate them after his passing. And all of the best fights in Ice Queendom are the ones based on things that Monty animated. The dream sequence fights pale in comparison. A lot of the fun feel of the original show has been taken away with the removal of its humor, too. There are things to like about Ice Queendom, namely the fact that its visuals are great, with the animation concept coming from legendary director Gen Urobuchi, and character design from Huke, who designed the characters for Steins Gate. The soundtrack is pretty good as well, although I still prefer the work of Jeff and Casey Lee Williams on the original show. And the Japanese voice cast brings a lot of skill to their performances, but you can also watch the show in English, with the Rooster Teeth cast reprising their roles. Overall, Ice Queendom is a disappointment. If you're a big Ruby fan, it might be worth watching once just to see a new take on the characters. But if you've never seen Ruby, the show probably won't do much for you it'd be much more worthwhile to just watch the original Volume 1. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm Matrix from Matrix AM, Animate and more, and I hope you have a great day.